the, from the city of Worthington. He's down for the Turkey Fest. So, welcome, Chad. Thanks for having me. Coach, uh, congratulations on a big victory, uh, the last test of your non-district uh, uh, season uh, a couple of weeks ago against Wharton. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was a good one. And, uh, yeah, we got to go over to Wharton, and uh, uh, we, we got to play a really good football team, uh, fought a little bit of elements uh, that night. You know, it rained uh, for a few days before we got there. Uh, the uh, fire ant beds were uh, active out on the field, and uh, – uh, but it was a it was a good night and it was a good way to finish up our non district schedule against a good football team. When, when we talked about their turf two weeks ago, you said it was it had been better. You know, yeah, you I lied. Last time we were down there, you did not tell the truth. Yeah, I was I was wrong. My memory had uh, not served me right. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, and we heard we heard that they're gonna they're gonna try to pass a bond issue to try to yeah, they, get, yeah. get uh, new facilities and stuff. Yeah. They, yeah. I'm sure they're going to put that. They said to upgrade the stadium. Too. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think they've proposed a $59 million uh, bond. Um, they've got an election in November. And, uh, you know, we've, we've played them, you know, so many times over the years, and I'm sure we'll continue to play them. So, uh, we're going to try to get some uh, secret voters from Quarto to go over there and go vote for that thing so maybe they can get a turf Heck field yeah. uh, uh, to play on in a, in a locker room. But uh, yeah, uh, hopefully, you know, they, they certainly need it, uh, not just athletically, but, uh, you know, they're, they're going to re try to replace some schools and things that, you know, have been neglected for a while, and hopefully it works out for them. Well, talk a little bit about uh, how the game went, uh, the positives and, and, you know, any negatives that you might have seen through that game that – that's going to propel you into this week's district? Sure. Well, you know, uh, going over there, they're a very athletic team. Uh, you know, the, the speed at the wide receiver position uh, was as good as uh, we've seen all year and, and we'll see, you know, probably all year. Um, you know, their quarterback, uh, like we talked about before, you know, really could throw the football and, uh, you know, made some plays uh, against us. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I thought our kids did a great job of executing what we do. Um, you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, one of the things going into the game, we felt like we had to be able to run the football against them and, and keep the ball away from them, um, you know, and out of their, you know, uh, athletes' hands. Um, I thought we did a good job of that for the most part. Um, you know, was a little disappointed in, in a couple of the turnover issues that, you know, kind of seemed to pop up. Um, you know, some of that was was due to, to some of the elements, but, um, but it still, it was, it was still something that you don't want to see, and uh, was some, certainly something that we could look at, uh, you know, the, the next week and, and, and really work on, um, you know, so to try to eliminate that moving forward. But uh, w w the good thing from that was is that we didn't let it snowball either, um, and it didn't, you know, a couple of turnovers didn't turn into six. Um, and, uh, you know, our kids fought back. We, you know, we, we held on, you know, defensively a couple of those times that we turned the ball over. And, uh, you know, I thought that over the course of the game, our offensive line just kind of wore them down. Um, you know, it was kind of a back and forth game throughout the first half. I think it was 20 to 14, something like that at halftime. Um, and, uh, you know, but as the second half, uh, you know, progressed, uh, we really began to have our way. Uh, with them, you know, and that was due to the hard work of our guys up front. I uh, thought we just kind of wore them down, and, and really in the fourth quarter, um, we're able to just to run the ball, you know, right down their throat to to really seal seal the victory, and and uh, um, you know, which was which was really a good thing. Um, we, uh, you know, in the first half, I thought one of the keys of the game as well was, uh, you know, we we went down and scored the first possession. Uh, we stop them. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I, think, I think when we kick the ball off, they, uh, we end up recovering the fumble. <laughs> and uh, the very next play, we go score uh, on a yeah. uh, long uh, pass to Jordan Whittington. And uh, so we're, we get up 14 to nothing. We give ourselves a little bit of a cushion. And, and we, you know, that was one of the things that we talked about. Kind of had a corny saying, you know, throughout the week, but – uh, 88 and out the gate, you know, it's about 88 miles to Wharton. Uh, but the more important thing is that we, we needed to go hit them uh, right out of the gate. We needed to get on top jump, of those guys. Early. We needed to jump on them early. Don't give them any life. You know, they had just come off a big uh, win against El Campo the week before, and so we knew they were going to be excited about, you know, playing the game and, and had some confidence. And, and we felt like it was really important that, 
you know, we try to uh, nullify yeah. that uh, right off right off the bat. Yeah, you scored 13 points in 12 seconds. Yeah, yeah, 13 and points I, in 12 seconds. Actually, you know, you got a great memory, man. But you talked about last week how important you know keeping the ball away from them was. I don't know if you noticed this, but you had 64 offensive snaps to their 44 for the game. Mm -hmm. And of the games we played this year, this was by far the most disparity in time of possession. We possessed it 32 minutes and 47 seconds, and they only had 15 minutes yeah. and 13 seconds. Well, I mean, the, that's that's more than two to one. Sometimes the best defense is a good, good offense. offense. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so. you know, keeping the ball away if they if they're on the sideline, uh, those guys can't can't score and and that was a big part of the, a big part of the game plan and a big part of the game and um, you know defensively uh, you know we created uh, whatever it was three or four turnovers it seemed like and uh, you know obviously that those were really key in the game um, and uh, uh, I thought that you know we did a good job as the game wore along at the beginning of the game I didn't think we you know did a very good job of stopping the run uh, but we kind of cleaned up some things that we weren't doing right. And, um, you know, once we started executing our defense as we had planned to, um, they, they really struggled running the football. Then they really became one-dimensional. And, and when you make an offense become one-dimensional, it, it makes it easier to defend them. And um, so, you know, that was a really good, uh, a, a good test for us. We had to go on the road. We had to play in some, you know, a little bit of difficult conditions. We had to play a really talented football team. A dangerous football team and uh, you know we finished up a non-district schedule that was a tough non-district I uh, don't feel like we played any slouches um, you know every team that we played uh, you know had some you know some really good strengths about them and uh, I think we grew a lot over the course of non-district I think if you look at from where we started uh, yeah. when we scrimmaged in, in our first game uh, to where we ended up at the end of non-district I think we showed a lot of progress uh, we're certainly not where we want to be yet, uh, but uh, but we're certainly headed headed in the right direction, and and that's that's always a positive thing to see. And so, um, you know, I think the non district schedule served its purpose in that you know it, um, uh, it 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 helped us become a better football team. We got a lot of depth from it. You know, we uh, in non district we had to overcome a lot of adversity through injuries and, and different things. We had a lot of kids that played a lot of meaningful minutes that going into the season, if you would have asked me before the season started, probably would have not agreed with you that all those guys would have played as much as they played, you know, in terms of, you know, starts and things like that. But they did. And um, at times, uh, you know, it was a struggle as, as, you know, some of them learned. But, but, but that struggle pays off uh, in, in, the term, in terms of depth. And experience, and that's what you want going into the district race. And so we feel good about where we're at. I uh, feel like we've had a really good uh, couple of weeks of practice uh, going into this week's game, and uh, we'll see where we're at tonight. Well, anything more? I, I was just going to say, I don't know this for sure, but I'm, I'm going to venture out on a limb here. You know, Coro's played football now for over 100 years, but you definitely had a, a record set in the first half, at least in the 16 years. I mean, we've never had anybody have 10 receptions for 169 yards in one half. Yeah, that's uh, that was. We're not, you know, it's not like we're a prol prolific air raid. You no, know what I'm that's team, right. But but yeah. y'all were 12 of 13. Yeah, 188 in the first half. Yeah, in, well, the, in the rain. In, in the, the rain. rain. In the rain. Yeah. No, I know. Well, I. You know, when I when I saw that, I thought, ah, oh, that's got to be a misprint. And uh, uh -huh. but it wasn't a misprint. Yeah. I mean, it, that's that's kind of how it worked out. And um, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, Jordan had a good game, and, and getting him back was was good. And uh, you know, Michael threw the ball well, and uh, you know, uh, that that only adds to the dimension of our offense when 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 you start having to account for more guys. Um, out there, and, I, and that's one of the things I was talking about about depth. You know, um, uh, obviously we knew what we had. You know, in terms of coming back with with Jordan at wide receiver, uh, but without him, uh, it's helped us establish you know some of those other guys. And so now that you got Jordan and Devin and DeAndre and Trent and Marcus, I mean now you've got a well-rounded um, receiving core that. Uh, you got you got to have to at least you know pay attention to all of them uh, because any one of them can be guys that uh, that we can target and, and can make plays and so 
that's uh, to me that's one of the positive things offensively that's come through our non-district schedule. I bet the Cowboys wish they had your, uh, your <laughs> yeah. problems. Yeah. <laughs> I was listening to Dan Patrick coming back this morning oh. to get here. That's what they, oh. they were talking about. They said that nobody, no tight end or no wide receiver for the Cowboys could start for like seven or could even be on the roster for like 17 other NFL teams. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah that's not saying anything nice. That's not good. <laughs> well, congratulations on that victory uh, against Wharton. Um, you're coming off of a bye week, mm-hmm. uh, and, and you have your first uh, – district game tonight talk a little bit about bandera and what 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 you're going to face but but also talk a little bit about uh how you handled this 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 bye week and and being off you know for so long yeah well that's that's quite honestly that's been a uh, point of emphasis uh for us for a year now uh or at least for for me um you know i've kind of felt like you know i've never i mean Bye weeks are difficult. Uh, they're tricky because you you want to heal up um, and and give your kids a chance to uh, catch their breath a little bit, but you don't want to lose your edge. Right. And there's a really fine line between the two. And um, and so you know I've kind of felt like the last two to four years um, we haven't really played as as well coming out of the gate after the bye week. Uh, is what I would like for us to play. And uh, part of that has been the competition. I mean, we've played a Sweeney team the last two years. that has been really good. Uh, we played, I think, uh, Sinton uh, before that. And so, you know, or, or uh, I can't remember who it was, but, but we've played some really quality teams coming out of the bye week. So that's been a part of it. Um, but uh, we wanted to, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things I did this off season uh, was I visited with numerous, uh, you know, head coaches about just, you know, what they do in their open week. And quite honestly, a lot of them do the exact same thing that we do. Um, but but we were able to take a few tidbits from here and there and, and uh, try, to, try to tweak our, our normal bye week routine. And uh, the biggest thing that, that we did this week or this past week was um, – we didn't focus at all on our on our opponent in Bandera this week. Not has last not, week. Last week. Yeah, the, yeah. This past week yes. during the bye week, we didn't focus on Bandera. Uh, doesn't really uh, have anything to do with Bandera or anybody else that we may play. But we wanted to try to go uh, uh, as much good on good competition as we could throughout the week. And so, really, we split up our team into two even teams. And uh, we did a lot of things competitively against each other, whether it was t- uh, just a simple tackle drill or whether it was, you know, a pass hole or an inside run drill, um, whether it was a two-on-two, you know, uh, wide receiver against DB stalk drill with a running back, um, whether it was a team. Um, and, 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 and we did we scrimmaged every day. Uh, now, we didn't scrimmage long. We'd, sc- we'd go about eight plays with each group and – we, our freshmen, you know, scrimmaged our JV. But the point was is that we wanted to be as competitive as we could be so that we could play as fast as we could play and, uh, and that we could maintain that competitive edge. And, um, you know, we'll see uh, how it pays off uh, tonight. Um, you, you know, you never know. But I do feel like we had the best op- open week that we've had in, in quite some time this past week. I thought our kids were – uh, really competitive with each other. I thought we got better in a lot of areas. You know, special teams wise, we didn't work as much team stuff as what we did break things down. You know, working, you know, coverage drills, working, you know, individual protection, you know, drills with our punt team. Um, you know, just just breaking down the various components of of those things and working on fundamentals. We did a lot of uh, open field tackle drills and. Uh, just, just things that we felt like we needed to address, and um, you know, I thought it was a very productive week. And then, obviously, going into this week, now we start getting ready, you know, for Bandera, and we start putting on that game plan. But we've we have tried to um, bring some of the competitive, you know, drills along with the, you know, installing the game plan for the week and. Um, you know, this week has been kind of a crazy week weather-wise. Uh, Tuesday, we got about 10 minutes of outside work, uh, and we had to go in the gym the rest of the time because of the rain and lightning, uh, quite honestly. Um, so, you know, we, we, we've uh, we've had to adjust a little bit, 
but uh, but you know Bandera had the same issues, uh, I'm sure, and uh, that's just that's just part of the part of the deal. But uh, I think going into the week, I, I think our kids are excited about it. You know, we're starting a new district race now, and uh, and I talked to our kids all week about. You know, a lot of times that first district game was kind of like that first playoff game. Everybody's 0-0, and everybody has big aspirations for what they want to do. And, um, and you know, and until until they have reason not to believe in those aspirations, they're going to be inspired and they're going to play hard. And and uh, and so we've got to go take that away. We you know we have big aspirations ourselves, and and so you know this is a new type of game in that there's long-term implications. Um, from this game, uh, whereas our non-district games, you know, you wanted a win, but that was about as far as the implications would go because it didn't go towards your playoff race or district race. Um, so we're excited about it. You know, we've never been in the Hill Country District before. Uh, we're fixing to get on a bus and go uh, almost three hours into the Hill Country and uh, uh, go play in Bandera, which uh, we haven't played in since 2006, I believe in a non-district game. Uh, Then next week, Lana will come here, and then we'll go to Austin to uh, play Eastside Memorial, which I do want to say one thing about that game, and I know that's a couple weeks away, but uh, we were informed this past week that uh, if you plan on going to the Austin uh, Eastside Memorial game, uh, they have a new um, policy there that you cannot bring in any bags that are not clear bags. So... If you were one that likes to plan way ahead, um, you might want to start planning on bringing you a clear bag if you have to bring a bag of something into the game, if you plan on going to that game here in a few weeks. But that's just a little side note while I'm thinking about it. That is a Thursday night game. That is a Thursday Thursday night game. That's that's pretty much a college rule now, the two college games I've been to this year, you know, if you – Programs that, too. Programs yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's that makes sense. The security can see. Absolutely. Yep. You absolutely. Don't have to dig through. Cuts right. down time. Yeah. Yeah. So that, thanks for mentioning that. We'll also mention it on the air when we get closer. But yeah. I didn't. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. glad you brought that up. So anyway, so we're excited about the new district race, Bandera. Um, you know, they uh, they're a team that I think is is really well coached. Uh, Coach Jeff Hamilton and his staff do a good job with them. Uh, they are. Kind of a multiple offense. Their offense centers around their quarterback. You know, I think their quarterback is probably their best player. Uh, he's got some decent speed. Uh, they've been out. They've been without their starting tailback now for a couple of weeks. I would assume that he's going to play tonight after a bye week, uh, but I'm not sure. But uh, you know, we ran against him in some uh, regional track meets, and he's got some speed. Um, you know, but they are a shotgun offense for the most part. Uh, they'll get in, uh, you know, four wides. Uh, they'll get in three wides with two backs. They'll get in uh, three wides with a tight end. They'll get in, you know, a tight end with two backs. They're going to get in a little bit of everything, but everything that they do, um, you know, centers around that quarterback and that tailback. Uh, they, they're a little more run-oriented than pass-oriented, although they are going to try to be balanced and throw the football. And uh, and so it's going to be key for us to contain that, contain the quarterback, contain the, the you know, uh, the, the tailback in the run game, and uh, and then do a good job of of defending whatever that they have for us in the passing game. I know that they've been working on us for a couple weeks now, and uh, you know that's that's also one of the scary things about a bye week is that okay, well, how creative has the other staff gotten? You know, what little wrinkles have they put in? And we fully expect that we're going to see something maybe we haven't seen uh, before. And uh, they're going to run the wishbone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they don't run the wishbone, but uh, they could. Uh, but uh, you know, there's going to be something in there that we'll see. We just got to be ready for it and be ready to adjust. And then defensively, you know, they are an odd front defense. They're kind of like um, uh, they're kind of like what Bay City was the first game of the year. Um, you know, they're going to try to stunt you know quite a bit out of it. And so uh, uh, you know, it's going to it'll be a formidable task. We're going on the road, like I said, and a big district ball game and. Uh, but our kids are excited about it, and we're looking forward to getting the district started, uh, race started. And Ray, you uh, you've checked the records. We've played them twice, right? Yeah, and, and that's what we're, we're we were doing. What y'all were talking? I looked at it. Yeah, 2006, 2007. Quero won both times. I believe I just wrote it down here. Uh, 51 to. Uh, oh, if I go to the right sheet here. And. 2006, we won 48 to 21, and 2007, we won 57 to 14. 
Okay. Yeah. Wasn't that when uh, F- Coach Fallon was Coach, here and then he went there yeah. and then he came back here the next year? Or well, something Coach or Fallon years? Coach Fallon was with us uh, the first year that we played Bandera. We played Bandera in Bandera. Bandera, okay. And then after that season, he left and he actually went to, to Bandera. Bandera. And uh, and so they came here, and he was the offensive coordinator uh, when they came here uh, the following. And then, year. but then he ended up coming back for he a came, year too. Well, after he did, that, didn't he? No, he came back the the year I my first year as the head coach. Okay, you know he came back with us one year. Your one then, year. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. So I thought that was yep. Yeah. Good deal. Well, good luck tonight, coach on the uh, on on tonight's uh, game. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on, or talk about the the. Sub varsity yesterday. Yeah, it's a good night again for our kids. Uh, our uh, junior high played uh, Lavernia here at Gobbler Stadium. Uh, our seventh grade uh, white team won fourteen to eight. Uh, our um, our seventh grade green team won forty to fourteen. Our um, uh, our eighth grade white lost a close game twenty two to twenty. Man, we fought back, had a chance to win it, and uh, just came up a little bit short time wise. And then our uh, uh, our seventh, or excuse me, our eighth grade green team won as well uh, in big fashion. So uh, it was a great night for our junior high kids. And then our freshmen in JV met um, we met uh, Bandera in Floresville last night. Our freshmen won thirty to eight, and our uh, JV won forty four to six. So um, overall, it was a great night, and uh, those kids are really doing a great job. I bet the JV's not happy they gave up six points. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Is that their, is that their well, only points they've given up? Or? Well, they, we had, uh, I think the only points they've given up when it hadn't been a yeah, combined yeah, freshman yeah. JV. So, yeah. When for teams that don't have two like like we do. Just out of curiosity, I'm really testing your memory here. You can just tell me who won. What y'all do against the, you know, the junior I played during the Oh, last week, week yes. Okay, yes. You last week. Cade. Yeah, we did. We played Cade and. Uh, um, all four teams, I believe, won. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, the uh, seventh grade, uh, actually, the seventh grade white team may have come up I'll short, find out. but, but our but our seventh grade green team won. Uh, I want to say forty four to nothing or forty eight to nothing, and our uh, I think it was forty four to nothing, and then uh, our eighth grade green team won thirty eight to nothing. And I think our eighth grade white team won eighteen to nothing. So, um, uh, wow. Okay. So it was it was a really good night. Our, our white team, our uh, our seventh grade white team, I can't remember the score, but I think I, I think we won that game as well. Wow. So it's been a good couple of weeks for Virginia. Yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, what what else is going on in the yeah. uh, Gobber athletic program. Well, uh, cross country had their district meet uh, this past Tuesday. Uh, we had some kids, you know, qualify for the. Uh, Regional meet, uh, Brooke Wendell on the girls' side qualified. She was second place overall in district. Uh, Will Green was second place overall. Cole Alcorn was fourth place o- overall. Th- they both qualified for the regional meet as well. Our boys' team, as a team, j- just just missed out on qualifying. Um, uh, ended up in fourth place, but had a good showing. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be going to Corpus for their regional meet here in about a week or so. Uh, our volleyball team uh, continues to do well. Uh, they uh, they played Gonzales in Gonzales uh, this past um, uh, this past Tuesday night and came away with a, a really big win in terms of the playoff race. Puts us pretty much in the driver's seat to uh, uh, to uh, to capture a playoff spot in in our district. And uh, they also beat uh, uh, Brooks Academy last Friday. Uh, and so that was a that was another big win for us, and I believe they they played Poteet last Tuesday, mm-hmm. and won that game. So they're on a current three game winning streak in district. They play Lavernia tonight, and uh, then they'll finish up with Navarro and Poteet again uh, in their last uh, couple of games uh, before the playoff starts. So uh, they're doing well. Um, you know, all of our sub varsity uh, volleyball teams have been doing extremely well. Have had a lot of success and. Kids, uh, kids are kids are doing a great job. Ray, you have anything to add? I just impressed with impressed with his memory. I, don't know. <laughs> yeah, he, I can't remember what happened three days ago. <laughs> I got forty seven <laughs> sheets of paper over here with something written on them, and he just rattles off what happened two weeks ago and scores no. Uh, 
All right. Starting starting the time of the year that counts now. I mean, not that the other hadn't counted, but you know, you're playing yeah. for marbles now. That's right. I won't say That's all right. the marbles, so we'll just yeah. say marbles. Yeah. <laughs> so, before we finish up, Chad, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, or I ask Coach Reeve. I always find it impressive when I come to Quero to uh, see the stadium, uh, to see the field. I remember, you know, before the changes that are currently here now, what it was. And uh, it's still impressive. In Worthington, uh, in Minnesota, football isn't anything like it is in Texas. Um, we play on a, on a field that looks like something Joe Adams had the shredder on <laughs> uh, on a prior road or something like that. Um, so this is a whole new ball game when we come here and to see this. this your, your high school facilities are better than most of our Division II college fields and, and stuff around here. So it's impressive to see, and uh, uh, it's always kind of a, a neat thing to be able to tell people that we get to witness. So uh, yeah. to you to you guys, uh, you impress us just for the fact that uh, you are Friday Night Lights to people like us who aren't in football country. Uh, so it's very impressive. I'm a season ticket holder for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota, and uh, – this is pretty impressive, <laughs> just like going to a TCF yeah. Bank Stadium. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's very neat. That's the, I'm a banger guy, but the the same company that built Y'all Stadium built McLean Stadium in Waco, so I know Y'all Stadium for Minnesota is pretty cool too. Yeah, it is. It, it's yeah. pretty neat, and it's a lot warmer here. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's 32 degrees back at home right now, and uh, it, that's impressive, and it's nice to be here. I do want to add one more thing since I can. Um, since I'm here, and tomorrow's a good day, and especially for Quero Galver football, um, get the win tonight from my buddy, who you all know, and I'll end it with this to give you a hint whose birthday it is tomorrow. Uh, he has a bigger mouth than me. You find him in the stands. He's often wearing a hard hat, and he goes by the term, Go me Green. <laughs> Happy birthday, Herb Spencer, tomorrow. There you go. Happy there birthday. Go. I did there not know that. Go. Thank you. <laughs> well, we have to have somebody from uh, Worthington, Minnesota tell us that yeah, it's Spencer's Spencer birthday. birthday. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it, on that note, also, uh, you, Turkey Fest is going on this weekend, so... Uh, Welcome to the Gobbler Sports.
Welcome to the Gobbler Sports Network broadcast of Quero Football. The Gobbler Sports Network broadcast of Quero Football is brought to you by Energy Waste of Quero, Energy Waste Rental Equipment for the Eagleford Shale. <laughs> And now, let's get you out to the stadium for tonight's game. Along with your producers and halftime show hosts Mike Cantu and Michael Cantu Jr., color analyst and statistician Ray Reese, here's the voice of the Quero Gobblers, Clay Poland. Hello folks, welcome to Bulldog Stadium in Bandera, Texas for tonight's district uh, matchup between the Quero Gobblers and the Bandera Bulldogs. We're fixing to get this thing kicked off. S sorry for the little delay. We wanted to uh, allow the the prayer and the national anthem to uh, to run its course. So, Ray, we kind of a humid night up here yeah, in the Hill Country. country yeah. Uh, a little cooler, though, not a whole lot, but a little bit, yeah. Getting started tonight, Quarrels in green pants and white shirts and white helmets. Uh, Banderas in the gray pants, blue jerseys and white helmets. Here we go, Clay. Gobbler's kicking this thing off to Bandera to start this thing off. Isaiah Munguia is your kicker. Deep kick over the uh, Bulldogs' head. Hits the, the goal line and goes uh, out of the end zone for a touchback. So uh, nice, nice start there by Isaiah Munguia. Ray, you want to give us the defensive starters for the Gobblers? Uh, yeah, we can do that tonight. Starting on defense for the Gobblers, uh, Jordan Whittington, Keyran Grant, Chance Albright, Robert Moore, Trent Haynes, Lester Denby, Caleb Werner, Justin Ficklin, Austin Swartz, Storm Grungle, and Marcus Williams. All right, here we go. Bulldogs going to start off at their 25-yard line. As they break the huddle in a shotgun formation, single receiver split to either side, offset eye in the backfield. Quarterback takes a high snap, hands off to the running back, up the, over the right-hand side, gets a couple of yards. Brought down by Trey Moore and, and Lester Denby. Going to bring up second and eight for the Bulldogs. Play. Bring up second and eight for the Bulldogs. We got uh, Bulldogs come to the line. Single receiver split to either side. Quarterback flanked by two running backs. Flags on the play. Gobblers jumped. Let's give our first shout out tonight. Henry Ludicky is listening to us in Friendswood at the game with their grandson. Listening to us. Thank you very much, Henry. John Kanitka is listening to us out in Stratton, Texas. Thank you, John. We appreciate it. Five-yard penalty assessed against the Gobblers. He's going to bring up second and three. Ball's going to be spotted at the at the Bandera 33-yard line. Bulldogs come to the line. Same formation. Quarterback barks the signals. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and no go by the uh, Bandera Bulldog quarterback. He's dropped for a two-yard loss. Pushes the ball back to the 30-yard line. Going to bring up third and five. Two receivers split to the left, one to the right. Quarterback takes snap, throws quick out to, oh, to the left, caught by uh, the Bulldog receiver, past the chains, going to be first down Bandera. And that's enough for a Bulldog first down. Brought down by Austin Schwartz and Justin Ficklin, but not after a Pick ba up. Bandera first down. Pick up of nine there to move the chains. First first down of the night. Bulldogs go to uh, no huddle. Go to the line immediately. Got three receivers split to the right, one to the left. Single uh, back in the backfield next to the quarterback in a shotgun formation. Takes the snap. Throws quick out to the right flat. Caught. Tripped up by 
Jordan, Jordan Whittington. Jordan Whittington, short, short gain. He's brought down by up, three. Going to bring up second and seven for the Bulldogs. House. He does pick up about two on the play. Bring up second and eight for the Bulldogs. Bandera comes to the line in a uh, unconventional formation. Quarterback runs the option out of it. Pitches to the running back around the right-hand side. Brought Austin down two, on the gobbler sidelines. Brought down by Austin Schwartz after a short gain. Going to bring up about third and four. He does pick up a little on that play. Bring up third and about six. Okay. Bulldogs are on their own 43-yard line. Bulldogs come to the line. Two receivers split to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap, rolls to his right, looks to throw downfield over the intended receiver. Defended by Trent Haynes. Trent Haynes, yep. Going to be incomplete, going to bring up fourth down. So the Gobbler defense has held. Bring up a punting situation for the Bulldogs. Shout out to Doyle Cruz and Otward Brown and Glithy Cruz, class of 1988, listing back in Quarrel. Thank you all very much. Deep for the Gobblers is going to be, I would assume, Whittington. Yeah, it's Jordan. Yep, Jordan Whittington. He'll be going to be lined up at about his 25-yard line set to receive this punt. Huh? Thought they faked it, yeah, but no, he kicked it off. Stays away from it, takes a bulldog bounce inside the, the Gobbler 15-yard line. Thirty-seven and seven, forty-four-yard punt. Gobbler offense comes out on the field, taking uh, taking taking over at the, their thirteen-yard line. They break the huddle with uh, Haynes to the left, Jordan Whittington. Haynes to the right, Jordan Whittington to the left. Goes in motion to the right along with Haynes. Barta is your quarterback. Takes the snap. Throws quick out to the right. Jordan Whittington caught. He's reversing field, trying to cut it up middle, making people miss. Great run there, close to the marker. He is brought down by number 11, Brown. That was all Jordan Whittington there, yeah. folks. First down, Gobblers. Picked up. He's picking up where he left off in last in, in week. Wharton, yeah. Ray. Ten catches in the first half last week for, I think, 100 and like 100 and. 53 yards or something in the first half. Wildcat formation. Barta and Haynes split to the right. Whittington to the left. Whittington goes in motion. Uh, jet sweep to him. He p pitches it to him and uh, drops it. That's an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass should be. It should be. Yeah, they're going to call it incomplete. Good job, ref. He tosses it to him, so it's a shovel pass. That is ruled as a forward pass, so it's incomplete. Second and ten for the Gobblers. Gobblers break the huddle with two receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation. Barta takes a snap, rolls to his right, looks downfield, throws, caught by Trey Moore. To, at about the 31 yard line. Number eight, Moore. Nice, uh, Toss and catch there by Barta and Moore. Right. Brown and Gunner Brown in on the tackle. Ball's going to be spotted at the uh, Quarrel 31 yard line, third and three. Shout out to Russell Williams, uh, class gobbler of 78, 79, 80, living in Houston, Texas. Russell, thank you. We appreciate you listening. Shotgun formation. Barta turns and pitches to, to Grant around the left hand side. He tries to get to the markers and gets close. I think you got it, Clay. Yeah. If the line's judge on this side's in the right spot, it's a first down. Yep, they're moving the chains. First and ten, Quarrel. Ball spotted at the 34 and a half yard line. Gobblers are on the move. About 33, 35 yard line. First and ten. That's the first rush of the night for the Gobblers, Clay. 
They break the huddle with two receivers to the right, one to the left. Barta takes the snap, drops straight back, looks downfield deep. Got a man wide open, Jordan Whittington. Touchdown, wide Gobblers. Wide open, and he will Gets score. behind the defenders, and uh, the rest is history. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez, State Farm Insurance. Gobblers go on top, 6 to nothing, with 6.49 left to go in the first quarter. Gobbler set to run the swinging gate. Pitch, uh, snap it to Whittington. He throws a quick pass out to uh, uh, Kieran Grant. Touchdown to the Gobblers. Two-point conversion, good. So if you're just joining us, with 6.49 left to go in the first quarter, the score is Quero 8. Bandera Zero, you're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. And Bush's Chicken believes in giving back to each community where there is a Bush's restaurant. Most weeks throughout the year, Bush's Chicken is donating meals and or its famous iced tea in support of area schools and churches. During the various sports seasons, there's a good chance you'll find Bush's Chicken in the press box or the concession stands at many high school games. If you were at a game or school event and bought Bush's iced tea or tender rolls, you'll be happy to know that Bush's Chicken donates the profits to the School District Booster Club or Community Group. All right, folks, we're back here at uh, Bulldog Stadium. Gobblers are up 8 to nothing. Deep for the Bulldogs is number 2, Kenneth Brown, and number 4, Bryce Kennedy. Isaiah Mungia set to kick, kick this thing off. Squib kick. Fielded by uh, the, the Bulldog at about the 46-yard line. So they tried a little trickery there, Ray. Yeah, tried a little good, Pretty good little squib kick like that, you know, where the kicker's trying to kick it to himself and let the ball roll about 10 or 11 yards before the kicker grabs it and just kicked it a tad too hard. There is a flag on the play. It's probably going to be offsides on the Gobblers. It's over there on our line. Clay, that last touchdown drive by Quirrell covered uh, – 87 yards, took only five five plays, and took only a minute and 51 seconds for the Gobblers to get into the end zone. Offsides on the Gobblers, so uh, Bandera will elect to uh, take the, the, the yards following the recovery, and uh, they will start out in Gobbler territory at the Gobbler 48-yard line. Two receivers split to either side. Quarterback in a shotgun formation. Looks to the sidelines for the play. Takes the snap, turns and fakes the handoff uh, uh, with the uh, guy in motion and keeps it himself up the middle. Nice gain of about four yards. Brought down by Giles. Werner and uh, Giles in on the play. Kobe Giles. Giles. Let's pick up about four yards for McNeil. Ball's going to be spotted at the 44 yard line. Single receiver split to either side. Shotgun formation. Quarterback under center in an eye formation. Turns and hands off to the fullback up the middle on a little trap play. And he gets close to the markers. Nice tough run in there by the the Bulldog fullback, fullback. On, on a trap play. Yep. On the tackle for the Gobblers. They're going to really just short of a first down. Shout out to Jason and Marsha Pena and kids listening from home. Thank you very much. We appreciate y'all listening. Bulldogs break the huddle in an offset eye formation. Single receiver split to either side. Quarterback in a shotgun. Takes the snap, hands off to the deep running back over the right hand side. Oh, good cut. He he fights for extra yardage and does get the first, first down. down. Yeah. yeah. Had a chance to get him in the backfield, but he made a good cut back to the inside. Gonna be first and ten Bandera at the Quarrel 37 yard line. Two receivers split to the left, two to the right. Quarterback in a shotgun. 
Wide receiver goes in motion, fake to the pitch to him. Quarterback keeps it up the middle, down to about the 22-yard line on a big run there on the quarterback keeper up the middle. Yeah, that's kind of faking the jet sweep, and yep. then just the quarterback becomes almost like the dive back on an option, like a zone read. So, From Bulldogs the, are on the move. 15-yard gain on that first down play there. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback in a shotgun. Wide receiver goes in motion. Hands off to the fullback over the right-hand side. Brought down. Brought down by Trey Moore. Brought down by Tr Robert Moore. Going to bring up second and about eight and a half. Yeah. Second and nine for the Bulldogs on the Gobbler 20 yard line. If you're just joining us, it's 418 left to go in the first quarter. The Gobblers are up eight to nothing. Bulldogs have the ball there on the move in Gobbler territory. Quarterback takes the snap. Hands off to the running back on the jet sweep over the right hand side. Got around the corner, down to about the goal line. We got flags on the play. Nice no, run there by Bandera. Offsides on Quirrell. Offsides Quirrell. The, the, the play will stand. First and goal from the one, one yard line, Ray. 19 yard pickup there. Shout out to Adolph Robinson listening to us uh, in uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. Adolph, appreciate you listening. Shotgun formation, first and goal from the one. Bandera has the ball. Quarterback takes the snap, hands off to the run back up the middle. He pounds it in. He's across the goal line, folks. Touchdown, Bandera Bulldogs. Nice uh, power running there by the Bandera Bulldog to uh, punch that thing in. Bandera lines up for the extra point. Left-footed soccer style kicker through through the uprights. So with 3:39 left to go in the first quarter, that brings the score to Quero eight, Bandera seven. You're listening to Gobber Football on KMAXSports.com. City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Quero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361 576 9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. All right, folks, we're back here at Bulldog Stadium. Quero leading 8-7 to seven following the Bandera touchdown. Deep, deep for the Gobblers is Marcus Gomez and Jordan Whittington. Seven play, 48-yard drive for the Bulldogs after the onside kick attempt by the Gobblers. Gomez and Whittington lined up at about their eight-yard line to set to field this thing. Short pooch kick fielded by um, Kevin Smith at about the 25, takes it out to about the 33. Smith takes the ball out to about the 33. So Gobbers will take over from there. Looking to put some distance between them and the Bandera Bulldogs. Shout out to Lewis Lockwood and listening to us out in Midland, Texas. He'll be here next. He'll be in Quero next week for the 1978 class reunion, Ray. Yep. You're not part of That's that class no, reunion. No, no, right? okay. two years behind that. But I'm, I'm getting close to 40 myself. So I, I know, I know. I was just giving you. You give me a hard time. All right. <laughs> Wildcat formation. Uh, Kieran Grant keeps it himself over the right hand side. Flags. He's, go oh. he's gone, but there's flags on the play. He, I say he's gone. gone. He was walked down. By uh, Tommy Cardenas, we got another late flag. So we got a flag at the beginning of the play and a flag, flag at, at the, the end, end of the play. play. Let's see what this thing is. 
boy, uh, Ray number twenty four, t- uh, Tommy Cardenas. Yeah, he's got some speed. Yeah, he's he won he won third in the hundred. That meter the one, is that the yeah, one Travis, Travis was talking, talking about? about. Yeah, he yeah. won third place at the hundred meters at the district track meet, or the re- whatever the regional. area or whatever regional whatever they called it. But he, yeah, he does have good speed. Okay, they're waving this flag off down here at the end. So offsides Bandera, that's declined. The play, the flag at the end of the play is waved off. So Gobbers, the run will stand. Gobbers deep in uh, Bulldog territory. Barta takes the snap, turns her hands off to Chance all right over the left hand side. Got some room, cuts up inside the ten, inside the five, touchdown, Chance Albright. What a run! there by Chance Albright. He was aided by great blocking uh, from his teammates. So swing and gate look again for the Gobblers. Whittington is your quarterback in this formation. Looks to the sidelines. They're running with it, folks. Takes the snap. High snap. Keeps it himself. Uh, Bulldogs up the middle and goes in for the two-point conversion. So the two-point conversion is good. So with 3.07 left to go in the first quarter, that brings the score to Quero 16, Bandera 7. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 124 years, the Quero record has been DeWitt County's most highly read, historically dominant, award-winning, relevant, community-serving, and supporting local sports and news source. Since 1894, the Quero record has been making a difference in the lives and livelihoods of the residents of DeWitt County. Call 361-275-3464 today to become a subscriber or visit DeWittCountyToday.com for more details. All right, folks, back here at Bulldog Stadium. The score is 16-7 to in favor of the Gobblers with 3.07 left to go in the first quarter. Clay, that was two plays covering 67 yards, and it took a whopping 32 seconds for the Gobblers to answer. Thank you for that info, Ray. I knew you'd have it. And it we, we got to slow down how fast, not us, but them too. We can't write as, <laughs> I can't write as fast as everything's okay, happening. Let's tell you what, we're going to send uh, Mike Jr. down to talk to Travis and tell him, hey, can you slow this thing down, Travis? Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> Deep kick by Mungia goes out of bounds at about the one-yard line, So and the flags come in the, in the, into the air. So this thing will uh, – not count. Great kick by Mungia, yeah, but it just needed another yard to go into the another zone. yard or another two yards closer to this side of the field where, when he set it up on the tee. Shout out to Lou Pena listening to us in Dumas, class of 1972. Thank you, Lou. We appreciate you listening. So let's see what the Bulldogs are going to elect to do here. I think they can take they can take it at the thirty five, or they can move us back five and ask us to kick it again. Looks like they're going to ask us to kick it again. Yep. Yeah, Ray, looks like they're, they're lining them up to kick it from the same spot. Yeah, shouldn't, they, they, shouldn't they take them they back five? They should move them back five yards. Yep. Nobody's caught that Nobody's yet. Nobody's caught that yet. I think looks like. Okay. I've never. <laughs> All right. Well. Yeah, unless, that, unless it was offsetting. I didn't see it. I didn't wasn't watching how he signaled, but okay, we're going to do it over. Munguia kicks it deep again. Fielded by number four at the five-yard line. He takes it this time, tries to get it around the corner. Cut down inside the 10-yard line by a group of gobblers, and they're saying we got the ball. But we'll wait for the referee. We got it, folks. 
Fumble recovered inside the 10-yard line. Big break there for the Gobblers. There was a, a whole group of uh, both pl players from both teams there. We couldn't see uh, who recovered it or not, but uh, didn't actually see a fumble. But we will take it. Ball's going to be spotted at the seven-yard line. First and goal from the seven. Gobblers come to the line. Two receivers to the right. Uh, Borda in a shotgun formation with Kieran Grant lined up behind him. Takes a snap. Hands off to Grant. Up the middle. Running hard into the end zone. Touchdown, Gobblers. Great play, one play drive there for the Quarrel Gobblers. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Swinging gate formation again for the Gobblers. Now they're matched up at uh, each section of the field, so uh, Isaiah Munguia will come in and kick this thing. The two previous times, I think the Gobblers saw that they were they were – they weren't matched up correct, right, correctly correct. with Bandera, so they went ahead and stayed in the play. This time they were matched up correctly, so uh, Munguia comes in. Good snap, good hold, and good kick by Munguia. Looks like, yep. So with 2.49 left to go in the first quarter, with 249 remaining that brings the score to Quero 23, 23, Bandera 7. You're listening to Goblin Football on KMAXSports.com. Titan Electric specializes in construction and electrical work, residential, commercial, and industrial construction. New homes, remodels, add-ons, and more. They can build homes from the ground up. Titan Electric. Call 512-720-1189 or find them on Facebook as Titan Electric of Quero, Texas. Titan Electric, proud sponsor of Quero Gobbler Athletics. Go Mean Green! All right, folks, we're back here at Bulldog Stadium. Shout out to uh, Glenn and Sherry Portis listening to us back in Quaro, listening on their iPad. Thank you all, Portises. We appreciate it. One pl uh, Ray, let me give these stats. One play, seven-yard drive. Yep. <laughs> five seconds. Five, uh, I got five seconds to it. <laughs> all right, good deal. Uh, <laughs> all right, Mungia set to kick this thing off. Another deep line drive kick, and that's going to go out of bounds. Coach Reeve is probably not pleased with that. If you're going to ho hook it, he, all he's got to do to adjust for that is move the tee to the near hash mark instead of kicking it out of the middle of the field. Exactly. Sometimes people kick from the hash that they're, if you would say hooking it, but it's kind of like in golf. If you're going to hook it that far, you either got to aim for the right. Adjust. Foot, adjust, yeah, aim for the right or kick it straighter. All right, so uh, Bandera will start at the 30-yard line. Bandera takes over first and 10 on their own 30. <coughs> they break the huddle with uh, receivers split to either side in a shotgun formation. Quarterback takes a snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Ball's on the ground. I think he uh, recovered it, though. Fumble was caused by number eight, Moore. Trey Moore was in the backfield disrupting everything. It's going to be a loss of about five on the play. Bring up second and 15. So here we go. Second and 15 for the Bulldogs following the fumble. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback in a shotgun. Looks to the sidelines to see if that's the correct play that they want to run. Now they change formation. Quarterback takes the snap. Looks to his left. Throws quick. Caught. Ball's on the ground. There. Did he have possession of it, Ray? Now we got late flags. They're going to they're gonna say it was a catch and a fumble. They're saying it was a catch and a fumble. I didn't think he had control of it, but... Now we got we got a, a flag on the play. Try to determine what this flag is. Came in late. Dead ball. Mm, dead ball personal foul personal against Quero. Against Quero. 
So Cor Coral will keep the ball following the fumble, the fumble recovery. So another turnover there by the Bandera Bulldogs, capitalized on by the Coral Gobblers. So they'll take over at their 43-yard line. First, the Bandera 43-yard line, first and 10. Gobblers come to the line. Empty backfield. Shotgun formation. Throws quick out to the left-hand side. Caught by D. Lang. Takes it down to about the 35-yard line. Ball is caught by number two for Cuero. He's going to pick up gonna, about gonna bring up, eight and a half. Going to bring up uh, second and two. Let's call it second and two for the Gobblers. On the Bulldog 35-yard line. Shout out to Cole, Harvey, and Justin Hilbert listening in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. They're faithful every week. Yes, they are. <laughs> Shotgun formation. Grant lined up behind Barta. Two receivers to the right. Takes the snap. Turns hands to Grant. Over the right-hand side. Got some room. Cut down at about the 26-yard line. Shout out to uh, my wife, Leona, my daughters, Carly and Claire, and Morgan Patek. They're traveling back from uh, uh, the game in uh, Lavernia, the, the volleyball game. We'll give those results at halftime. So thank you all for listening. We appreciate it. Gobblers come to the line. One receiver split to either side. Shotgun formation. Now Whittington switches and goes to the left. Two receivers to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to Grant. He bounces it, cuts it up, down to the 20, down to the 10. Drop down inside the 10-yard line, first down. Quero, nice run there by Kieran Grant. Ray, Kieran looks like he's getting back into that that form that he had right, last yeah. year where he was cutting on a dime, you know. Yeah. Football shape, too, you know, when he yeah. missed the first three or four games of the year. But he took it from the 16 all the way down to the 9. So he picked up uh, 17, 17 yards in the first down. Gobblers come to the line. Two receivers to the right. Grant lined up behind Barta. Fake to Grant. Looks to the throw and is hit. Flag on the play. Incomplete, folks. Should have given you that result. Incomplete, but there is a flag on the play. He was blindsided at the last yeah. second. Ball squirted out incomplete, but we got flags on the play. What do we got out here, Ray? A pick know. or something? Pass interference against the Gobblers. Yep. Pass interference on Quarrel. We had a, must have had a pick or something going yeah, on out there, Ray. Somebody had to cross. You see that more in college and professional football than you do in high school. I, I can't yeah. think of the last time I saw it. Yeah. You'll see it more with the receiver shoving off, you know, trying to get position on a, like a long ball, but. That'll push the ball back out to the 24-yard line, so it'll be first and goal from the 24. Shout out to Val Brown listening to us out there. Val, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Referees are talking something over here with 22 seconds left to go in the first quarter. All right. So we're going to have one more play in this quarter. Gobblers break the huddle, come to the line. Whittington and uh, both Whittington split out to the right-hand side. Barta takes a snap. Ball's on the ground, recovered by Quero. Flags on the play. Ball on the ground. Wow. Per procedure on Quero as well. So That was not very pretty. We're moving backwards, Ray. Yeah, that, that was a no play, but, yeah, there was procedure on the wide receiver, I believe. There was a flag on the play, but Bender elects to not accept the penalty. No. Uh, Check that. They do accept the penalty, and it'll bring up 
Here we go. Gobblers come to the line from the 29-yard line. First and goal. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to Grant over the left-hand side, makes something out of nothing, down to about the 25. And that's going to be the last play of the first quarter, folks, with your Gobblers leading 23-7 to at uh, Bulldog Stadium in Bandera, Texas. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Lance Tire Service is your one-stop shop for tires, brakes, alignments, and general automotive repair. They offer 24-hour road service for passenger vehicles, light trucks, agricultural, ATVs, industrial, and light commercial. They've moved to a new location, 1003 West Heaton on Highway 72 in Quero. Stop by and visit with Clayton and Clifford. Their friendly staff is always ready to assist you with any questions you may have. If nothing else, stop by to visit with Clayton's trusty dog, Cleo. Check out their website at lancetireservice.net. You can get a quote, see promotions, shop tires, and look at services offered. Lance Tire is a proud gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Give them a call at 361-275-2387. Lance Tire Service. Anytime, anywhere. We'll be there. City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Quero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361-576-9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Sorry. All right, folks, we're back here at Bulldog Stadium. Beginning of the second quarter, Quarrel's up 23, 23 to 7. Two receivers to the right, none to the left. Barta turns, hands off, to th- fakes and throws Ooh. behind his receiver, Jordan Whittington. Looked like it just slipped out of his hand. Yeah. I mean, that was, it, that's uncharacteristic of Barta yeah. to throw it that far behind uh, Whittington. Okay. Uh, some scores of note right quick. Uh, Wimberley's up 28 to nothing over Eastside Memorial. That's uh, at the end of the first quarter. And Navarro was up 7-3 to three on Lano beginning of the second quarter. So other teams in our district in action tonight. Clay, in the, fir- in the first quarter, just real quick, total offense uh, for both teams. Bandera, 59 yards, and Coro had 200 yards of total offense in the first quarter. How, how much? 200. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Barta in a shotgun. Grant lined up behind him. Barta takes a snap, throws. Got a wide open man. Corner of the end zone. Caught Jordan Whittington. He made a move to the inside. Took it to the po- to the corner and was wide open. Barta just laid it over his shoulder for the gobbler touchdown. Third and goal from the 24 and results in a gobbler touchdown. Swing and gate formation. They like what they see. Snaps to Whittington. He throws out to the right flat. Nothing doing that time. That time the pass was to Lane. So the two-point conversion fails. That brings the score to 29-7 to with 11.45 left to go in the half. Shout out to Craig Conrad, Glenn Ray, and Richard Randall from the listening to us from the pergola there in Ar- Arnickeville. Arnickeville. Hey, guys. Thank you all very much for listening. We appreciate it. All right, so 29 to 7 in favor of the Gobblers. Update on the other two games in District 13 action. Navarro 7, Lano 3. We've got a lot of stuff going on back in Quero this weekend. Uh, Turkey Fest kicked off tonight. Got a lot of good bands, a lot of good uh, activities going on at the park. So uh, come out to the park this weekend and enjoy the Turkey Fest festivities. Isaiah Munguia set to kick this thing off, folks. Got this thing still teed up in the middle of the field, Ray. Let's see if he hooks it again. He does, but it's a little better this time. Lands in the end zone for the touchback. As you can see, Ray, uh, Munguia has got the leg. Yeah. Um, you know, we uh, a lot of times this year he's pooch kicked it just to uh, 
kind of pin him over in that sideline. But uh, tonight he is letting that thing go. So yeah, it's kind of a lot of options available on you know when we kick off, like you said, high pooch kick, deep pooch kick, you know, kick it to the 15 really high, or just kick it in the end zone. Bulldogs take over uh, on this drive from their 25-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback in a shotgun fakes the 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 throw over the left-hand side. Got some room past the yardage markers. Cut down hard by Kieran Grant, but not after a bulldog first down. He faked the throw out to the right flat, kept it himself over the left-hand side, and had uh, 11 yards of running room. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 37-yard line. Bandera comes to the line. One receiver split to either side. Shotgun formation, offset eye. Quarterback takes a snap, runs the option over the, around the right-hand side, and is blown up for a uh, big loss. And we got a late flag. And we have a late flag. Well, let's see who this is on. Great defensive play there by the Gobblers. Hopefully it's not nullified by a 15-yarder. And it is, folks. 15-yard penalty assessed against the Gobblers. Automatic first down, Bandera. That'll push the ball out to the... Bandera 49 yard line, first and 10. Personal foul against the Is that our second one tonight, Ray? Yes. First down for the Coach Reeve can't first be too happy about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying they didn't have, I haven't seen either one of them, so I'm not, not sure either. what's happened, but you know. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation, quarterback flanked by two running backs. One goes in motion, high snap. Run it to the left, kept by the quarterback, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, flag on the play. Neal kept the ball on the left-hand side. You're going to say offsides on the gobblers. Yep. I believe you're right, Ray. Offsides, Quero gobblers. Offsides against Quero. So, gobblers continue to shoot themselves in the foot with penalties tonight. First and five for the Bulldogs. Ball's going to be spotted at the 46-yard line of Quero. Bandera breaks the huddle. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback in a shotgun. Two receivers to the – three receivers to the right, excuse me. Quarterback takes the snap, rolls to his right, looks downfield. He's pursued, throws, caught. McNeil's pass looks like it's complete. Great catch by uh, Cardenas. Cardenas uh, on the Bulldog sideline. Covered by two gobblers and uh, first down Bandera ball, ball spotted at the quarrel, at the quarrel 39 yard line. He was being chased by uh, the backside linebacker or defensive end and got that thing off just in time for a Bandera first down. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, quarterback flanked by two running backs. Fakes, fullback. keeps the handoff, uh, gives the handoff to the fullback over the right-hand side, short gain. We'll give uh, Joe Cardenas, Joe Cardenas and Caleb Werner made the stop there. Going to bring up second and nine. Two receivers split to either side. Shotgun formation, quarterback. Looks to the sidelines. Changes the formation in the backfield. Takes the snap. Low snap. Th throws across the middle. Picked, picked off. Austin Swartz. Great. No, nope. or is it Kayla Burner? That's Austin Schwartz, Austin folks. Schwartz. Stepped in front of that slant and picked it off. Turnover. Gobblers. Take the ball. Take over at the 30 yard, their 30 yard line. Nice defensive play there by Austin Schwartz. The quarterback had two options. He was either yeah. going to go out to that left flat, uh, but he chose to go downfield and try to hit the slant, and Austin Schwartz stepped right in the front of it and caught it. 
Gobblers break the huddle. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Wildcat formation. Grant is your quarterback. High snap. Pitches to uh, Whittington around the left-hand side. At the 40, at the 50, into Bulldog territory. At the 30, still going. Brought down at the 15-yard line. By none other than number 24, Tommy Cardenas, the gentleman who uh, who brought uh, who brought uh, Kieran Grant down earlier, and it's coming back, folks. Holding or blocking the back, something. So this this uh, huge gain will be for nothing. I will get something. He'll get six out of it. Holding on the goblins. And then they'll mark off 10, so it'll be first and 14. Ball's going to be spotted at the 26-yard line. First and 14 for the Gobblers. Nice play there, nullified by the penalty. Did he yes. pitch it to him? Okay, so it was a pass, actually, from that was Kieran a pass. to Whittington for six yards, and then we get the 10-yard penalty. All right, first and 14 for the Gobblers. Same formation, Wildcat formation. Whittington comes in motion. Hands off to him, reverse to Barta. Barta's got it. He's looking to throw, but he is being bottled up, and he gets slung down for a loss. A little trickery there by the Gobblers goes for nothing. Pitch, Grant pitch to Whittington. Whittington. Reversed it to Barta, and Barta goes nowhere. Actually, lost two yards. Yeah, he did. Going to bring up second and second and sixteen for the Gobblers. They break the huddle with three receivers to the left, none to the right. Albright lined up behind Barta. Now Moore goes in a slot, hands off to Albright over the right-hand side. To Tough running. He's he's at the 40. He's at the 50. At the 40. Got a blocker. Down the field at the 30. Still on his feet inside the 10-yard line. And there's no flags on the play, Ray. I don't see any. <laughs> he uh, went over the right-hand side and reversed that thing and ended up over on the Bulldog sideline down at the seven-yard line. Chance Albright. So from the 24, that's 26 and 43. It would be 69 yards for Albright. First and goal for the Gobblers. Single receiver split to either side. Shotgun formation. Barta takes a snap. Hands off to Albright up the middle. He's running over folks down inside the five. He lowers his shoulder pads and makes his way on down to about the four-yard line. They're going to spot him at about the four-yard line. So first and goal from, I'm sorry, second and goal from the four. Brian Burns. Second and goal from the four. Gobbler's knocking on the door with 644 left to go in the half, up 29 to seven. They break the huddle. Single receiver split to either side. Shotgun formation. Albright lined up behind Barta. Now Lang moves to the right. Turns. Hands off to Albright. Up the middle. Cuts back. Tries to get in. And they give it to him, folks. Got taken down right at the goal line, but uh, enough to get in. Nice hard run in there by Chance Albright. Swing and gate formation for the Gobblers. And they will uh, kick elect it. to kick the extra point. Mungia comes out and sets his tee. The holder is Trey McNary. Good snap. Good hold, good kick, uh, but we Delay got flags on the play. Delay a game against the Gobblers. So we will move this thing back five. Can't understand how you can get delay a game on it. Well, well when they waited. That, they waited. Yeah, they that waited. was probably on Isaiah for just taking too long to get set. Yeah. Here we go. I mean, 
the distance not going to make any difference here with his leg strength. May affect the accuracy. Another good snap, good hold, and kicks that one through. That Hits the scoreboard. So, with 6.19 left to go in the half, that brings the score to Quarrow 36, Bandera 7. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. All right, folks, back here at Bulldog Stadium. Gobbler set to kick this thing off following the Chance Albright touchdown. That touchdown was brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Five plays, 70 yards, two minutes and 36 seconds off the clock. Second touchdown of the night for Chance. The Bulldog returners are lined up at their five. High kick fielded at the four. Taken by the Bulldog right up the middle. Gets out to about the 23, 24-yard 24 line. Brought down by number 21, Tyler Villa. Some other Hill Country games. Tyvee is at Uvalde, and Tyvee is ahead right now, 14 to 7, with 10:37 remaining in the second quarter. Folks, we could probably just let you just listen to the announcer. And he does a good job. <laughs> I, I, I like keeping stats in here where I can hear. It's nice. Shotgun formation, single receiver split to either side. Quarterback takes the snap, turns and hands off to the running back up the middle. He tries to reverse it. Goes nowhere. Gets to the original line of scrimmage. Brought down by Justin Ficklin and uh, Elijah Varnado. So, nice defensive play there. They are going to give him a yard. Bulldogs come to the line. Two receivers split to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation. Balls on the ground. Quarterback picks it up and uh, is dropped for a huge gain. He's going to be tackled for a large loss. He's hit initially by number 26 from Quero. In the neighboring town of Medina, they're hosting a number So that's going to bring up third and about 20. 26 to 6 in the second quarter. Maybe more. Yeah, we're 20, about 24, the ball, Ray. The ball's back on the 13. 22, sorry. So third and 22 for the Bulldogs at following the bad snap. Two receivers split to either side. Shotgun formation, single back lined up next to the quarterback. Quarterback takes a snap, drops, keep, run, tries to keep himself Ooh. cut down hard. Uh, keeps the ball. Who D is that? Denby? Lester Denby. Lester yes, sir. Denby. He comes up and cuts the quarterback down for a no gain or a gain of two, excuse me, but bring going to bring up fourth and long. That'll bring up about fourth and 20 for Bandera. Deep for the Gobblers is going to be Jordan Whittington lined up at about his, at, a, at about the Bandera 43-yard line. So Gobblers stand to get really good field position on this thing. Almost blocked. Kick goes straight up in the air. Goes out at about the 27-yard line. So Gobblers take over with great field position. Kick over to about the 27-yard line. 
That's where the gobblers will take over, first and ten. Oh, it's a 12-yard 12 12 yard punt with no return. He had about four gobblers yeah, in, I'm his, surprised. in his face. I thought, I thought he was going to get it blocked. <laughs> so uh, he was lucky to get that thing off. 3.48 left to go in the half. Quarrel leading 36-7. to seven. They come to the line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Grant lined up behind Barta in the backfield. Barta takes a snap, hands off to Grant. Over the left-hand side. He cuts back up the middle. Cut down and is slow to get up, but nevertheless he does. Down to the down to the 24-yard line, gain of about four. Barta looks to the sidelines for the play. Both Whittington split out to the right. Lang split out to the left. Grant lined up behind Barta. Barta takes a snap, fakes, looks downfield, throws down the middle of the field, got a man. Caught by DeAndre Lang. That ball will be caught by Lang. Great play there by Lang. Had a defender on him, Ray. Yeah, he did. Just went up and caught it with his hands. Touchdown, Gobblers. No flags. That touchdown brought to you by... Brian Gomez, State Farm Insurance. After every touchdown, Ray, I look downfield for a flag now. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something. Um, when you come off a bye, a bye week, you're never as sharp as you were before. I know we talked about it in the coaches' show, but yeah. uh, execution on the plays looks good, but you start making mental mistakes and people jump off sides and you line up off sides. Yeah. Munguia's uh, extra point is good, folks, so – with 3.02 left to go in the game, that's that was a one-play drive, wasn't no, it, Ray? Two. Two-play drive, I'm sorry. Two plays. With 3.02 left to go in the f- in the half, Quarrel leads 43-7. to seven. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. All right, folks, back here at Bulldog Stadium. Gobbler's up 43-7. to seven. Line drive kick by Munguia. Goes out of bounds at the two-yard line. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Ray said, "Geez, <laughs> you've got to adjust to that hook." You know, I don't, I don't mean this to be crazy, but from a statistical analysis, is that a you know if you if they don't make you kick it again and you elect to take it on the thirty, is it really a penalty? And if it is, how many yards is it? I guess it's five because if you had a touchback and you get it at the twenty-five, yeah. But I don't, you know, that's one of those. I'm not, I'm not sure anybody's ever clarified for me exactly how you how you mark that one up. I mark it off as a five yard penalty. Yep, that's what it looks like to me. All right, so here we go. Bulldogs take over at their 30 yard line. Single receiver split to either side. Quarterback in a shotgun. Turns, hands off to the running back. He tries to bounce it. Got some room. Forced out of bounds after a short gain. He's pushed out of bounds. Forced out of bounds by Kieran Grant. Bring up second and about seven. Ball's going to be spotted at the 33-yard line. Bulldogs come to the line. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation, offset eye. Quarterback takes a snap, low snap. Pitches to the running back around the left-hand side. 